Good morning. Um, God's blessings to all of you on this fifth Sunday in Lent. We use as our order of worship this morning the order of divine service setting three without Holy Communion. Because of the penitential season of Lent, we omit the Gloria and Excelsis and the Alleluia, replacing the Alleluia with the verse of the day. We join now in singing together hymn number 490.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. <coughs> Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking, <coughs> <coughs> seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay, lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and as I, as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a sound and behold, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, 
Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are all cu clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot Please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you this is the word of the lord thanks be to god we hear the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, 
he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to, do, to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The, the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for the sake, and for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into this world. When Jesus had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, 
come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. We now make common confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, Hymn number 430.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lazarus is dead, and this is how we would normally describe someone whose life had ended, whose body was buried, sealed up in a tomb, concealed by a stone, rotting in the darkness and starting to stink. But Lazarus is dead, is not how Jesus speaks. Jesus says Lazarus is sleeping. Why? Because while death is for us a very final sort of thing, for Jesus, the immortal Son of God, death is but a sleep from which the faithful will rise. This Jesus' disciples failed to grasp. Lazarus was only sleeping because sooner than later, Lazarus would get up. Jesus would raise him from the dead. He would get up because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and the one who believes in him shall never die. This message comes to us as we face the coronavirus pandemic around us. We may feel like we're in a tomb already as we have been asked to stay at home unless there is very, very good reasons to leave. We are to distance ourselves from each other. We are to try and not spread this disease among us. There are those of you that may have contracted this virus that are now sick at home, very sick, maybe even facing death. And, it is, and if it isn't the virus, there are those of you that are facing death for other reasons. For we all face death. And as I mentioned before, that seems as a very final sort of thing. But again, it isn't final for Jesus. For he is the resurrection and the life. And he has promised to each one of us eternal life. This is the very point for today. When we have Jesus, we not only have the resurrection and the life in the future, but we have the resurrection and the life right now, right here, as our very own present possession. And that means those who have Jesus in faith never really die. They only sleep in the certain hope of getting up again. Eternal life is ours already in Christ. Our Lord wants everyone to believe this. And so, in our text, he takes this opportunity. The death of Lazarus is Jesus' opportunity to show the world he is the resurrection and the life. Now, as we read, Lazarus' death is for the glory of God. Jesus, when he hears the news of Lazarus' illness, stays right where he's at, in Bethany for two more days. And then, because he stays there, he misses Lazarus' death. There is no mistaking it, Lazarus is dead. 
he has died from his illness. And Jesus allows this death, he allows Lazarus to die that all might see the glory of God, that all might believe. There is pur purpose in Jesus' delay for waiting until Lazarus' death. First of all, as we read, Lazarus' death is an occasion to call Mar Martha to faith. You heard it as Jesus was coming to Bethany. Now, after Lazarus' death, Martha approaches. But you might ask, where is Martha's mind? She's stuck in the trauma of the past. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, Martha does know about the hope for the future. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Martha doesn't realize what is there right before her. Her mind is stuck in the present and looking forward to the future, but doesn't realize what's there in the present. And so Jesus takes this opportunity to take Martha out of the past, out of the future, to himself. I am the resurrection and the life. To believe in him is to live forever and not die. But that's not just a future promise. It is a promise for each and every one of us today. As we live in Jesus, we have hope, hope for today and the future. We are always with our Savior, Jesus Christ. To believe in him is to have the resurrection as our own present possession. To believe in him is, at the day of death, merely to fall asleep in the hope of waking up again. In these desperate times, as we look to our Savior Jesus Christ, we can have the hope of Jesus' presence, peace, and comfort among us. It is through Jesus Christ strength that we can live our lives. Jesus asks Martha if she believes this, which she gives a wonderful confession of faith. She confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus looks to you today and asks you, do you believe? May your response be like Martha's and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, your Savior and Lord, who has taken your sins away and given you life with him. Lazarus' death and rising point to Jesus' own death and resurrection and ours on the last day. Believe it or not, we are coming to the close of Lent. Today is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, we will begin Holy Week. Today is sort of a dress rehearsal for Holy Week, preparing us for the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we foresee that wonderful celebration of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. His victory over the grave, his victory over sin, that brings the grave. 
it raises the question, why did Jesus die? The answer is to take upon himself our sin. It's punishment. Jesus goes to the cross to die in our place so that by his death he might destroy the one who has the power of death. Because Jesus died upon the cross, death has no more power over Jesus. He has the last word. Eternal life is ours in faith in Christ and his work for us. We share in the hope of the resurrection. Jesus, just as Jesus called Lazarus forth from the grave, we who sleep in the dust of death shall one day hear the Lord's voice come out. To believe in Jesus is to have his resurrection and life right now. Even as we are kept at home practicing social distance, even though we may not be amongst our family, friends, and neighbors, we do have the hope of life because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who knows? Maybe this, just like Lazarus' death, is a way of teaching this world around us, that our Lord is near, that he hasn't forgotten us. Jesus is by our side as he promised. My prayer for you today is that the Holy Spirit who comes through the word preached and proclaimed will teach you this, that you too can believe and have eternal life. May the peace that Jesus Christ brings through his death and resurrection be yours for the future, but also today. May you hold on to that wonderful promise in the days ahead, looking forward to that day when you will see your Savior face to face in all his glory in his kingdom. Amen. Now, may the peace which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We come, O Lord, with the dry bones of our broken hopes and disappointed dreams. Bind us up in Christ, that we may learn to pray with confidence, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all things needful to us and to our salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ, even though we must for a time stand apart. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in light, <coughs> and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O eternal Lord, your Son has given us the new birth of water and the Word and planted faith in us that we might be your own children. Bless your church, supplier with able, fearless, and caring pastors to nurture us in your Word. Raise up faithful fathers and those who will teach and pray in your name in every Christian household. Keep your church in your mercy that she may believe without fear and love 
without limit, even now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all might of men. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic. And teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with favor on those who celebrate baptismal birthdays, especially Bailey Jepson, Jessica Shoup, John Savonara, Eunice Olchenbruns, Mason Pankretz, Brett Spurl, Colin Glidden, Kenneth Anaker, Mary Jean Kruger, Crystal Fast, Kaylin Nickel, Maddie Nesmo, Doris Friesen, Kevin Cron, Lonnie Aids, Seven, Cynthia Bolt, Destiny Mori, and Gage Mori. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, your son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer illness, who are troubled in mind, or whose time on earth is short. Spare us from death now, but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Eternal God, you carry the grief of those who mourn and remember all who die in Christ. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, and give that same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow and fear of death that we would neither live nor grieve as people without hope, but trust in you at every hour. Hear all our prayers, especially on behalf of Dwayne Bond, Naomi Botin, Marilyn File, Dorothy Dunker, Lois Lee, Addison Jensen, Bob Jass, Kathy Svollen, and Carla Wendt. Attend to the daily cares and needs of the Bethany Bolt family, Darlene Myers, Marthy, Martha Olchenbruns, Kyle and Ashley Schrader, Lyle Severson, the David and Tammy Watkins family, and for all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the missionaries and planting churches near and far, blessing those churches with whom we partner in the worldwide work of the gospel, and bless the congregations now struggling to fulfill your bidding and do what you have called them to do in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God Almighty, through your Son you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You have raised up the dry bones of a people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain us in this hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and be ready when our Savior comes again in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that, by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We close by singing Hymn number 433. God's blessings and peace and comfort to you again this day. Um, I know the days seem long and uh, the future seems uncertain, but I pray that our God would work in you faith to remember that he is the resurrection and the life and that, you, that he is with you always no matter where you are this day. God's blessings to all of you in his peace.